So I really love my Galaxy Watch 6. It has really improved my day-to-day -day life and it has helped me use my phone a lot less. However, there are some huge pet peeves I have with it, but I was able to fix it by creating my own apps. In this video, I'm gonna show you some advanced tips in order to get the most out of your Galaxy Watch 6. Let's get right into it. Now, the first things first, one of the things I really hated about the Galaxy Watch 6 was how slow it felt. It felt very laggy when you're interacting with the UI. And that's mainly because of the crazy animations that these product managers and developers have brought onto us. I hate this trend of crazy, slow, fluid animations. Yes, it looks cool and whatnot, but it really prevents me from doing the action I want on my wrist as soon as possible, and it's not very comfortable. So in order to reduce animations, there's a trick to it. You don't just go into the accessibility and disable animations completely outright, because doing that will actually ruin your notifications. There's a weird bug that if you disable animations through accessibility, your pop-up notifications will appear blank. So the first step is that you want to enable developer options. So in order to do that, you have to tap on something several times and that will enable developer mode. Then you'll have this option at the bottom of your settings called developer options. So go right into that. And then you wanna scroll down to animations. Now here's the thing that's really important. You don't wanna disable all the animations. There's three settings, window scale animation, you can turn that off. Transition animation scale, you can turn that off. And the animator duration scale, do not disable that. Disabling that will affect your notifications. Whenever you get a pop-up notification, it'll just be blank. So what you need to do is put it on the smallest setting, which is 0.5X. And these three settings on their own is gonna make your Galaxy Watch 6 feel a lot more snappy and a lot more responsive. So I definitely recommend to pause the video and do that right now. So my second pet peeve is that you cannot bind the long press, the bottom button over here. You cannot customize this functionality. So if I long press the bottom button, it opens Samsung Wallet. And you might say, well, I'm just gonna use Samsung Wallet for that quick functionality. You, you want a tactile button. Maybe you're in a store, you have some groceries and you wanna quickly long press and summon your Samsung Wallet. Well, Samsung Wallet sucks. Number one, it requires you to enter your PIN code twice. So if I remove this watch and I put it back on, I'll have to enter the operating system PIN code, which is the first PIN code. And then if I want to use Samsung Pay, Samsung Wallet, I have to enter my PIN code again. So in, in certain times where I forget to do the second step, and imagine having to do the second step every time you put on your watch. Let's say you wanna go for a shower, you put it on on your dock, let it charge, put your watch back on, you have to enter it twice. And if you forget to enter it the second time and you're in a store and you wanna quickly pay or maybe you're in transit, it's just a very cumbersome experience. I don't know why they asked you to enter the pin code twice. Unlike Google Wallet, which is far superior to Samsung Wallet. Another thing I like about Google Wallet is that it's a lot more reliable than Samsung Wallet. For some reason, every time I use Samsung Wallet and I try to scan maybe two out of five times, it will just fail. So I have to exit the app and reopen the app in order for the NFC payment to actually work. So it is not only do you have to enter the pin code twice, and sometimes you forget to do the second time, sometimes you'll just pay and then you have to like, oh, okay, this is embarrassing. You're, you're in a line at a grocery store and you have to pay once. I was like, okay, let me tap, let me tap again. And you have to ask the clerk to like reset the, their payment. So Google Wallet is 100% reliable and I much prefer to use Google Wallet. Now you might be saying, well, why don't I just customize the double tap bu top button to Google Wallet? Well, yes, I think that's a good idea. However, you do have a wasted button at the bottom. So if you long press it, it's always gonna be Google Wallet and you can't customize it. Now I created an app for free that you can download. You do have to sideload it and I'll explain how to install it and why it needs to be sideloaded. But anyways, the main functionality is that it allows you to bind the double tap button to multiple functionalities. One of my most used features on the watch is to be able to have a tactile button in order to turn on the flashlight. This is something that obviously when I'm walking around at night, I'm trying, I don't wanna stumble around. I love the fact that I could double tap my watch, turn on the flashlight and see. Well, if I want to also have the convenience of Google Wallet to double tap, I cannot have both. Now, the way that my app works is that, is that it uses the sensor on your on your watch to determine if it's dark or if it's a lit situation. Obviously, if it's bright or there's light, you're gonna open up Google Wallet. But if it's dark, then you obviously want to open the flashlight. And if you double tap twice in a bright environment, it's gonna open up your loyalty cards. This is the Stow card. Now, let me do a quick demonstration of how it works. So. Right now, it's obviously bright in this situation. I'm gonna double tap. And then you can see it works very nicely. So I'm gonna double tap again. Very fast and responsive. And one very important feature I added on this app is the fact that it has haptic feedback. So you know that when your double tap shortcut is not is pressed correctly, you can feel it on your wrist. Sometimes you, you, you're you not sure if the double press worked or not. This gives you immediate feedback that it worked. Just like a nice vibrate. It really works very nicely all the time. 
Now I've designed this to be very efficient for your workflow. So obviously you want to pay, but sometimes you want to also scan your loyalty cards. Maybe you're going shopping for groceries and you want to scan points and whatnot. So what you need to do is double tap twice in succession. So once, twice. Now I open up Stow card and I can pull out my gift cards and my, my points cards and all that stuff. Let me quickly demonstrate one more time. So double tap, double tap, you know, choose this one over here, then exit. And then I'm back on Google wallet. So it's at a very efficient workflow. You don't have to grab your wallet and, you know, fumble through all your cards and whatnot to look for that loyalty card if you have one. And then you obviously can pay for transit or pay for your groceries really quickly with this double tap feature, knowing that it vibrated and you know it's gonna work as soon as you take it out out of your wrist. Now I'm gonna turn off all the lights and I'm gonna double tap and you're gonna see that the flash light is gonna turn on. Now let's talk about how to install it. Unfortunately, you cannot simply just download it from the Google Play Store just yet. Now there are prerequisite apps that you need to install. You need to install a third-party flashlight app because I cannot bind it to the native Samsung flashlight. Samsung does not allow any developer to use their native flash, flashlight app, which is fine because this third-party option is free and it's really good. You can set a timer, you can set different colors. It's a lot more customizable and I much prefer this third-party option. And fun fact, you can't even bind the native double press button to the flashlight, which is kind of crazy. The next thing that you may want to install is called Stow Card. This is totally optional. This is only if you want to use the double tap, double tap feature where you go into your loyalty cards and stuff like that. I do recommend getting that app. It's really nice to have all your loyalty cards on your wrist, especially in case you forget your cards at home or you don't want to fetch it on your phone when you're you know, shopping and stuff like that. And obviously you're going to need Google Wallet. I mean, that's the best way to pay. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Google Play is going to accept an application like this. They're not going to understand it. They have crazy Wear OS guidelines that prevent me from even shipping my own Bike Share Toronto app, like a Bike Share app and a Transit Now app. I have to do all these upgrades for Wear OS 4.0 on my own personal apps. By the way, if you're interested in those public transportation apps, I'll leave a link in the description. It really helps me out if you do check them out. Now, I am going to provide an APK that you can download from the repository. It's an open source, so you can go there, modify it, and rebuild the APK if you want. APK is just the application, and what you need to do is sideload it. So you'll have to enable developer mode. Now, sideloading APKs onto your Wear OS watch is not very hard at all, but in order to do it, there's two ways. One is with an application on your phone called where to installer. I'll leave a link in the description on how to set that up. All you need to do is download the APK and install it onto your Wear OS watch, Wear OS watch with that where to installer. It's called where to installer made by Malcolm Bryant. And then my preferred method is to simply install ADB, which is a command line tool that you can install on Windows or Mac. You basically have to enable wireless debugging in this in the settings. I made a whole video about this. You're going to do a pair. You get a pair to your computer and then you're going to connect. And then from there, you can type ADB install and the path to that APK. Now, I'm not going to cover that. You can ask ChatGBT on how to set up ADB and how to you know, set up all that stuff for your for your computer so that's connected to your watch, or you can just use the where to installers. I'm not gonna cover in this video, but I did make a full vi video on how to do that stuff in another video. So I'll link to that in the description as well. Once you have it installed, the final step is to go into customize buttons and bind the double press shortcut to flash pay launcher. It's very easy after that. All right, so for the third and final most annoying pet peeve I have with my Galaxy Watch 6, and it's not the fault of Samsung or anything like that, this is not an issue specific to this manufacturer, but it's the fact that Facebook Messenger does not exist on the Wear OS. Now, we do have WhatsApp and we have all these texting apps and stuff like that, but I am shocked to this day, such an important vital app, especially for millennials who grew up with Facebook and use Messenger as their main way to speak to their friends and whatnot. There's no way to actually have it on your watch. I perused all the XDA forums and you cannot, you can no longer sideload a good version of Facebook or Facebook Messenger because they've either disabled the functionality or it's, it's just too hard to send a message because the text is all garbled up because it's obviously a really small device trying to sideload a phone app on your Wear OS app. It's pretty crazy that you can sideload phone apps onto this. Anyways, those methods, methods don't work anymore. And worst of all, you can't even visit their web app, their mobile optimized web app, Facebook or Messenger on your phone. It forces you to go on Android. I, what I did is I found a workaround. They actually have a much more simpler basic version of Facebook and Messenger. It's like way more basic than the actual websites. They're a little bit confusing. They have like two different websites and this one's like super basic. So what you'll need for this is to download the Samsung browser. So I created a very simple app, which is basically a shortcut to the specific web app version of Messenger, Facebook Messenger. Open Messenger. Opening Facebook Messenger Wear OS Basic. And what all it does is that you can simply get into it right away. Just tap it. 
And the only one caveat is that it's slightly slow for some reason. I don't know if it's the Bluetooth, but yeah, here it is. Now you can zoom in. You can see I'm in Facebook Messenger. It's super small. It's really hard to read, but honestly, in a pinch, when let's say I'm on my bike and I don't want to pull out my phone, I just want to check if my friend messaged me and do a quick reply. You can reply everything. Everything works fine here. It's just a little bit slow, but it's nice that you can just quickly go in here and check your messages. So I'll leave a link in the description to that APK that you can sideload. It's a very simple one. I really enjoy having Messenger on my wrist again. It's really nice to not use my phone at all throughout the day and just check it for any important messages. But I do really hope that Mark Zuckerberg does make a Wear OS version of Messenger because I think it's extremely important for the success of Wear OS. So those are my three tips. Number one, disable the animations, but make sure you disable it in the right way so that your notifications still work. Number two, Samsung Pay sucks. I hate the fact that Samsung does not allow their users to bind the long long press button on the bottom to any other functionality. So we have to find these hacks. Yes, there are other solutions out there, but they require accessibility, which causes some weird locking noise every time your screen turns off. So I did not want to use that solution at all. It did not work for me or it was very annoying. I think being able to combine three different functionalities, your wallet, your flashlight, and your loyalty card into one shortcut, the double tap shortcut, based on the circumstances of your current environment, whether it's bright outside or dark outside, is absolutely fantastic. And this app is super battery efficient. The light sensor is very, very cheap to use. It's a cheap resource and it's very instant. And if you're like me, like any other millennial, not having Facebook Messenger really does suck because sometimes you just wanna check those messages and being able to have the browser, which links to the actual Facebook basic version of Messenger through a special app that I created, that I hope helps us out until we get a proper native Wear OS Messenger app like WhatsApp. Anyways, if these tricks and tips helped you in any way, please do give a like and comment. It really helps out this channel. Without without your support, I cannot continue making these videos. So do, do give a like and I will see you in the next video.